question we are trying to answer today is do we have a crisis in trustworthiness and if so where does it come from and how can we try to overcome it we uh, have a considerable erosion in authority in disciplines across the board so the purpose of this group is essentially to try to understand well, why is that the case and if it is the case that uh, rhetoric overcomes reason as it were how do you somehow counter that and we are trying to firstly understand what is involved in the alleged breakdown of trust in expertise and also what the consequences of such breakdowns are for civil society and uh, governance. In former times I had to teach my students how to go to the library and how to find the book and where you can uh, find the trustworthy book. Now you have a lot of data in the internet and you have to teach the students well what is dangerous what is uh, valuable where are arguments where is sound science behind it why has it become fashionable to claim not to trust experts that i think is a fascinating question and i suspect it is that um, we see a great deal of mud thrown at most forms of expertise uh, uh, all the time. We see, of course, a great deal of media coverage of uh, the bad apples, the sensational cases. If we look at news now, it comes from everywhere, you know, and it's, it's sent to you by people, people that you know or you may not know, but where are your anchors of trust? And in that new technological system, we really have to re-ask those questions, like what is it really that we're seeing? Whom is it that we're trusting? Trust and a loss of trust and a loss of trustworthiness is very broad. It's in government, it's in society, it's in court of law, it's in journalism. The world is now flooded with fake news and fake stories, some of which are fake about news about science itself, some of which are obvious attacks on the authority of experts and expertise. You don't want just more trust because sometimes mistrust is justified. So we want well-placed trust and well-placed mistrust. And we want to have some idea of how to achieve this. At least having you know, the notion of trustworthiness re-articulated for the digital age, that would be a major achievement. From there, of course, we can go to more practical problems and talk about what is it between the public and scientists, for instance, that um, makes the public sort of distrust scientists. Most members of the public don't have particularly hostile attitudes, but where you get the beginnings of the thought, you can't trust science, you can't trust scientists, you can't trust research, you can't trust university teachers. It's pretty infectious. It spreads rather fast. We're all people as well as scientists broadly defined, so this is not an us and them type investigation. It's trying to understand processes that we're all part of. It is sometimes difficult to speak out if the majority, the mainstream, is telling something different. It needs character, it needs courage, and um, a certain responsibility towards the public to speak up. And this is, I think, what good scientists really have learned over the years more and more. We have to make these process is transparent and we have to show to the people that we reflect quite a bit on what we are doing, what we should be doing and what we should not be doing. More debate, more open discussion of who benefits, who might lose, who decides from about how these innovations take place. That, that would be good. I very much hope that what will emerge from these discussions are some suggestions, recommendations, both about how we as scientists in the broadest sense can help to rebuild trust in what we do and in order to make some suggestions as to how those responsible for the public policy process can work with us and draw on expertise for the public and societal benefit.